this is Mary over here at Images on the Page, and today I'm going to be kind of starting a new series on my booktube channel. Um, this was kind of inspired by someone who commented on one of my other videos. Their name is R. Whitbeer. Um, I hope that I am saying that right. If not, please correct me down in the comments below. Um, but they, it was on my most anticipated books that came out in the summer. Um, I was just asking if I had read a lot of fantasy before, and if so, um, I should kind of talk about the ones I read before booktube, and that's kind of what I'm doing. I'm just going to go back and kind of talk about my old favorites. Not all of them will be fantasy, but the majority of them will be, because that is my favorite genre. Now, the first book I'm going to talk about, I have actually talked about a few times on my channel, but not like really in depth. Um, and that is Italian Revenant by Michael A. Stackpole. Now, Michael A. Stackpole wrote two fantasy. This isn't a series, it's a standalone, but this one and the Dragon Crown. Dragon Crown War, tri uh, not trilogy, but saga. There's four books in it, so I couldn't remember what it was called. Um, but most of them are, he is more well known for writing. Um, Kind of like sci-fi books um either with star trek or star wars i know they're different but i don't remember which one they are so please don't be mad about the mix-up um but this one is one of my favorites because it has a magic system like i've never seen and before or since i've read this um it's also a standalone like i mentioned which is really odd for fantasy especially epic fantasy which is this is um and it's just, it's so well done in the one book. Um, it follows Nolan, who is a justice of, it's called the Shattered Empire. Um, and not only, they're like medieval sheriffs, in a way. Um, I don't know how else to describe it, but they go around bringing justice in order to other parts of the Shattered Empire. Um, but they don't, they're not just like normal cops. Um, not only are they trained in martial arts, but they also have a very lethal magic, kind of. Um, they are, after they complete a certain, like, trial, they are then imbued with this power, which is makes a um, like skull on their hand and it allows them to look at um, some people's like memories and intentions um they can't do it for just anyone like it's I think they usually do it for like criminals or people they're pursuing and then while looking at that they have to decide if the person lives or dies really um, which is pretty intense um, there isn't, it's not just like they can do this willy nilly, not really. They have, I don't want to call it a higher power because it's not, but like they have this relic that they have to then go in kind of abjugate themselves to, um, and kind of prove that what they did was right. Always if, cause like when they kill someone, they're actually removing their soul and it is then inside their body. And if they don't get rid of it, they could go insane. Um, but Nolan is from this other kingdom called Sinjaria, which has just been overthrown. And he is like one of the last of the ruling line. Um, so um, when he starts. And then in the main mission in this book, he has to go back to what was his hometown and help the king that basically killed his entire family. Um, so it's just very, it's so well done. The magic, like I said, is super interesting. It's really hard to explain um, just because it's not one I've ever seen. It's not like you would normally expect. It is only through these intentions of um, looking at someone's memories and life and stuff like that like they don't 
you can't use it for anything else. It doesn't, you can't make fire with it or change the weather or anything like that. Like that's the extent of what they can do. And it's just very interesting to see someone who has resented the overthrow of his kingdom of his hometown um and he refuses to call what is Hamas um is what his Sinjari is called now he refuses to refer to it as such and he constantly refers to it as Sinjari well he has to go in as an old Sinjari and like noble son or whatever to help protect the king um and it's just, it's so interesting because there's, of course, uh, even like there's someone who's trying to kill the king and they, he has to figure out who's doing it and why. And also go overcome his hatred of said king. And it's just so well done. I absolutely love it. I've, I think I've reread it quite a few years ago after I read it in high school. And I would definitely recommend it for lovers of fantasy, um, especially if they don't like sequels. I don't know who loves fantasy and doesn't love sequels, but um, I would definitely recommend it for lovers of fantasy, especially if you like slightly more political and mysterious fantasy. Um, mysterious is not the right word, um, but kind of like a problem to solve. And it's just, it's, the writing's really well done. There is not, sometimes in fantasy, especially in sequels, I find that some things can be a little drawn out just because they're filling a book in a series and they want to make sure they give everything its due time. But sometimes things go on a lot longer than they need to. And this does not have that opportunity because it is not, I mean, it's not that thick of a book. It's only... It's less than 500 pages as a standalone epic fantasy, so there's not much time for really drawing things out more than they need to. But that also being said, it I don't feel like, if, from what I remember, none of it is really rushed. I think it's really well done. Um, I would highly recommend this. If you've ever read this, or his other series, please let me know. I've not actually met anyone who has read this besides my old friends in high school who I forced to read these. Um, other than that, it's not really well known. I, I haven't really heard anyone talking about it. Of course, especially now because it was published in, I'm guessing the 90s. 1997. So, yeah. I was six when it first came out. But yeah. So... I, that is the first of this new kind of throwback series I'm going to do. If you have any questions or have any other kind of epic fantasies that you know of that not many people have read, please leave them in the comments down below. I am really drawn to not well-known fantasies. I find them a lot more interesting a lot of the times. They're not so much filled with the tropes, or they are, but they do them in a much different way. Um, I always just stop and say hi. And until the next video, ta-ta for now.